And welcome to the Proud Pagan Podcasters premiere podcast about podcasting from PaganPodcasting.org. I'm Dave <laughs> of the Pagan Centered Podcast Family of Shows. And joining me tonight. And <laughs> I'm Lamika of Lamika's Wiccan Podcast. All right. So we finally have a podcast to discuss podcasting. Or at least the organization that oversees pagan podcasting, the fraternal organization. We're not here to dominate, we're here to fellowship. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going to cover, cover a range of topics, but the very first thing I want to go over is, um, as you notice, Dave, awesome Dave from PCP, is, has been promoted to the co-chair of the Proud Pagan Podcasters. He's done more for this organization than I can even really list. So it's about time, and um, I'm glad he accepted the title, and all that goes with it. Um, also, you might have noticed, if you've been checking the site, that inactive shows have been delisted, as well as deleted from our membership. If you were a, uh, a host of one of those shows and you're bringing your show back, then contact us through the site, add your show again, and We'll monitor for consistency. We're going to be a little bit more stringent for people who just pod poof. Yeah, I mean, we're not delisting you if you go off the air for a week or you're late by a week or two or five. Um, we're delisting shows that haven't been on the air for like four years, okay? Yeah. We think if you've been off the air for a year, you're probably pod poofed. So mm -hmm. uh, people coming to our site, especially with us being at present at so many pagan events now, we're trying to promote PaganPodcasting.org as the place to get pagan podcasts and to find pagan shows. And if people keep finding shows that are off the air and are still talking about stuff from 2005, yeah, that doesn't reflect well on us as an organization or a community. So that's mm -hmm. why we got to delist a lot of these shows. I mean, right now we are segregating a lot of stuff into active and inactive shows, but eventually the inactive shows category will com completely disappear. Mm -hmm. Also, like I said, if you are coming back, then re-add your show, contact us, and we're going to monitor before we re-add you. So if yeah. you're consistent, then we'll bring you back. You know, I mean, it's it's the price of readmission. Well, I mean, you know? the main thing is, you know, we've seen shows come, come back and then they're back for like one, maybe two episodes, and then they go away again. And that's annoying to everyone involved, the listeners, us as an organization. Mm -hmm. You know, there is overhead for every show that's here, and we love having shows. We just don't want to waste our effort. Um, yeah. And another thing is with newer shows, we're not going to just say, oh, you have one episode, that's okay. We're going to see if you got two or three episodes before we let you in, just to make sure, you know, you got a little bit of rhythm going. Mm -hmm. And we do monitor it. It's, it's not like, you know, we don't give you any responses if you contact us or, you know, you have one one show and, and we'll never look at your page again. No, I... I personally take care of that, and I do go back and I check on your shows, and if two or three episodes come back up, then you get added, and I send you a confirmation of your ad, okay? Dave? We're going to remove Lindsay from this conversation or re-add her later. Yeah, sorry. There we go. No more okay. beeping. Okay. Um... Oh, yes, we are doing a, a newsletter as well. Uh, for those of you who prefer not to listen to podcasts, even though you're a podcaster, that's perfectly fine. So we're still going to do a newsletter four times a year uh, for members of the PPP. And this will be a members-only newsletter. Speaking of which, uh, a lot of the new cool toys that we're going to be talking about or, or additions or um, even the newsletter itself, you can opt into it. You don't just automatically get get the newsletter or any of the benefits that we're going to start offering from 2011. We want a more active organization that, you know, seeks to do more things, has uh, more goals than just, you know, fellowship. Um, the newsletter itself is going to be sent out, like Dave said, four times a year. So your basic spring, summer, autumn, and, and winter. Right now, it's the spring 2011 one. The summer 2011 one is going to be recorded at Pagan Spirit Gathering um, because 
a lot of us well, are going to be there anyway. Yeah. Get to, like, Lamika just signed up for PSG, so I think that makes her like the tenth show showing up to PSG. Hmm. This is the biggest gathering of pagan podcasters anybody can recall. Yeah. So if you're going to be at PSG, make sure that you get on that list. Um, so you can also know that there, you can be a part of the pagan media camp at PSG. You can, you know, we all know who's going, and, and also your listeners can know. Okay? And we're also trying to do a lot of cool things, but we realize not everybody wants to get emails about everything, and not everybody wants to do exactly the same thing. We understand that the pagan uh, media community is very diverse. Some people want to cover certain things. Some people want to be made aware of other things. And that's why we've taken the, the option of we're going to do as much as we can, but everything will be opt-in. This way you are not forced into doing anything. Like uh, one of our fellow podcasters here has said, uh, you know, we're not here to be your dominatrix. You know, we are here to be an organization to help out the pagan podcasting community. And, um, you know, feel welcome to opt in. I mean, we don't mind if you opt in. It's just that we really don't want to be, you know, we don't want to send you a newsletter and then be accused of sending spam because we understand not everybody likes getting email from organizations. And that's cool. So that's why we want to have everything be opt in. Yeah. Speaking of opting in, where you can do that is the 2011 uh, PPP roll call form. So that's going to be available soon. Yeah, go to uh, paganpodcasting.org once this uh, podcast is up and out on a feed. And, uh, yeah, you'll be able to do that. Also, uh, this is the accompaniment to the newsletter. So everything's going to be written in there, and all the links are going to be provided to the roll call form um, and, you know, links to everything else that we're going to be talking about. Um, speaking of the other things that we're going to be working on, most of you might have noticed that we have a PPP member Google Map on the site, thanks to Dave. Um, we also have a Pagan Media Map on our homepage. Um, Dave, can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, the Pagan Media Map is really cool. So if you're Pagan Media and you're covering an event, so if you're, you know, if you're going to be at an event for people to meet you, or you are there to record audio, or you're there to record video, or you're participating in a history um, preservation or you know anything cool like that, uh, give us a heads up and we'll put you a pin on a map and uh, people can find you. And if you're doing something that's already on a map, just you, know, you can drop me an email, dave at paganpodcasting.org. Or if you're going to be doing a lot of events, uh, I know there's a lot of shows out there like uh, the Pagan Center Podcast and Awakely and White that do a lot of events. Uh, we can give you edit, uh, editor access, so you can just edit the map yourself. I mean, here at the PPP, we are very open to giving our members access to everything. So uh, we just ask that you be responsible. That's all. Yeah. Um, so that's also some really great things that are coming up from spring. And um, as Dave has said, it, all of this is opt-in. You know, you can choose to participate more, but we are looking to encourage more participation within the group as well as from the group outside. Speaking of from outside, you know, from our group to outside, if you're going to be using music, now this is a very important thing. Permissions are process, music permissions are processed through the website paganpodcasting.org or if you provide email record of permission from the artist or those who hold. Um, yeah, and email can be really, really simple. I mean, we're, uh, part of this is we're looking out for you, but part of this is also we want to make sure that the pagan podcast community does not get associated with rampant copyright infringement or disregard for the law. Uh, so, you know, it, you know, to cover your butt, all you really need to do is, like, say you, you got, like, a, a pagan artist. All they have to do is send an email saying, hey, I authorize, you know, blah, blah, blah show to air my music. It, has, it just needs to be really simple. Email is legally binding. So, uh, you know, all it has to do is be an email. It could also be written in something more traditional if you wanted to do, but, you know, we realize email is the easiest for most people, and that's kind of why we give you that option, just to cover your butt and make sure that our organization doesn't get affiliated with uh, people that are like, oh, I can't, I couldn't figure out who owned the, the rights to this music, so I'm just going to willy-nilly violate copyright, not pay this person, not give them anything that they want, uh, because I'm in a huff and a puff and screw that artist. Yeah. Um, the other thing was that, Yes, we're, we're focusing right now on making sure that you have permission for your specific show, but if you feel that this artist is also willing to give permission to our organization, that's something that, you know, you can include when you contact, you know, for example, when I contacted Sharon Knight, 
you know, she gave me permission for my show and she also gave me permission to share her music with the PPP. So the main thing we want to stick to here is music played must have permission from the artist, no exceptions. Yeah, you can get it individually just for your show or uh, we have a lot of music that we've negotiated the rights to for uh, all of the pagan podcasters that are members of the PPP. And mm -hmm. uh, you can also use that as well, so that you don't have to. You don't have to make every artist go through the PPP. You don't have to. We appreciate it, but you don't have to do it. You can still do what you've been doing all along, which is asking an artist, "Hey, can I play your stuff?" And the artist is like, "Yeah, yeah, all right." All we ask is just you cover everybody's butts and just make sure it's in writing somehow, some way. Okay, so now on the uh, really cool things that are coming up for all of us um, is advertising. First off, if you went to the website recently. You can see that the tabs at the top have changed and the style has changed a little bit. Um, some of the new tabs you'll see on there is the advertising tab in the navigation bar. You can, of course, this is another one that you can opt in to receive information about about um, maybe stores or uh, individuals who want to advertise on Pagan Podcasts. Now, as we said, this is an opt-in, so it's not mandatory. Um, but you know, spread that information around. That way, we can get you know more shows having some kind of an income come into their show. We're not saying you're going to get a whole lot of money, but yeah, you know. you're not going to be the next Bill Gates with this. But I know advertising has been an extremely controversial thing in pagan podcasting. Some people absolutely want to do it. Most people absolutely positively do not. That is why this is opt-in. Secondly, we are not doing mass negotiation. Uh, the way this works is an advertiser expresses interest in being on a pagan show. We ask them for just enough information be that kind of covers the lowest common denominator of information we're all going to ask them anyway. Like, do they already have an ad? Or do they want us to just, uh, you know, do a voiceover for them? Or, you know, what all do they want? And what are they looking to get out of it? What, what kind, are, you, are they going to offer, you know, something to your audience and so forth? And you, as an individual show, determine if you opt into this, you determine on an ad by ad basis, yes or no. I mean, our, our, our purpose here, we're not like an ad agency. We're not, we're just here to just connect people that are looking to advertise to pagan podcasters with, you know, venues for them to get their ad out to the masses. You know, this isn't a replacement for, hey, oh, I heard this really cool thing and I really, really just want to promote it. That That's totally cool. That's that. We'll get to that in a, a second, but this is uh, specifically for advertising. So if you've got some event that wants to be mentioned over and over and over and over again, you know, that's what advertising is for. But again, this is a show by show thing. You are just notified, hey, I, this person's interested in advertising on a podcast. And then you got to take it from there. We're not doing any negotiation for you. Every show retains their individual freedoms in regards to what advertisers they do or do not want to accept. And if you don't want to accept any, that is cool. That's not a problem by us. Okay, now more information on the specifics of that and, and how to do, go about doing that is going to be available in the newsletter. So definitely take a read. It's not a very long newsletter and go through it. Um, Dave had mentioned, oh, Dave, if you want to continue about the press notices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get a lot of people that are like, hey, I got this, like, say, uh, International Pagan Coming Out Day, Igpod. I want to get this out to every pagan podcaster. And up till now, that has been an utter nightmare. So what we are doing, we're having an opt-in thing where a person can submit a form online, and then you get a notification saying, hey, here's this cool thing that somebody wants you to know about. And we don't filter it or anything. Uh, but we do have, uh, you know, some good spam control on the form, which is really good. But uh, this way, instead of it being a, a mess of friend of a friend of a friend to figure out who's doing what and who needs advertised or what cool things are getting done, you just go to press.paganpodcasting.org, type in, fill out the form. Then individual pagan podcasters, if you want to cover the event, you can. If you want to ignore it, you can. Again, we are letting the shows still have retain their individual freedoms. We're just providing a conduit for this information to get from the people that want to disseminate something through Pagan Media with the actual members of Pagan Media, such as uh, you guys that do Pagan Podcasts and Vidcasts. Another thing to really remember is that these press notifications or uh, information bits, they don't have to be huge. They don't have to be only for large things like uh, International Pagan Coming Out Day or you know Pagan Spirit Gathering, Pantheacon. It can also be for your local... Uh, you know, Pagan Pride Day, uh, some kind of festival or event that you might be having. Yeah, like you Hamilton know. Pagan Pride Day. I mean, you know, that's been sh covered by many shows, and it's still pretty much a, a small-ish, local-ish event. So, mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, another thing about shows is that we have uh, different media partners, specifically uh, Pathos.com. We've been discussing with them, and they're interested in our podcast. So we've created, well, the Epic Pagan Show nomination. The Epic Pagan Show <laughs> nomination. <laughs> yes. It's um, if you feel that you've had just an amazing show and it, it needs to be shared with other people and it's it's something you know worth sharing with other people and you want to share it, then we have a form on there. It's epic.paganpodcasting.org. You can give the link to it. Uh, what, what does it exactly say on the page? Basically, it's like uh, what you're not nominating a show as a whole. Yet. You're nominating it's just an individual the episode. episode. Yeah? And mm -hmm. the thing is, okay, what's the show? What's the episode? Where can they get it? And what's so cool about it? So, if, like, you know, let's let's take an example here. Uh, Wiggly Way, episode 63. What's so cool about it? You get to experience the entire history of Wicca in about three hours. <laughs> that is really cool, you know? Yeah, stuff like that. So if you get a show that's really just... doesn't have to be your show. Uh, we encourage people to nominate each other's shows, and that's really cool. Only thing, you know, just don't abuse it. I mean, this is for something that is truly epic. You know, this is something that, like, oh my god, all the print pagan media should know about this. And especially the folks over at patheos.com, which are very uh, much work, trying to work with us to get out the word about some really cool pagan, pagan audio that's out there. So, um, Another good example of that would be uh, D on Pagan FM. I think she might have been the last or if not one of the last or if not the last person who did an audio interview of Isaac Bonowitz before he passed so I mean these are the shows the episodes sorry I keep saying shows the episodes that really need to get out there and need to be heard um, <coughs> speaking of sharing what needs to be heard promos for your shows will now be required we all from, we know you all have them so this isn't that big a deal. We just need to know where to find them. We really love, everybody loves sharing promos, but it's become a nightmare to find promos for other shows. Please. Mm -hmm. Well, this is why it's become required, because we really, really, really want to encourage people promoting each other's shows. It's just gotten so much more difficult over the past three years, because now everybody's promos all over the place. There's no central repository like there used to be, and we're mm -hmm. going to reassemble that central repository, so now it becomes way easier for everybody to cross-promote everybody else's shows. And, and when we're talking about promos here, we, we're not expecting anything really grandiose. It doesn't Ten even have seconds, to be professional. Six, it could be like, hi, I'm Bob of Bob's Pagan Podcast at <laughs> Bob's Pagan Podcast at .com. Yeah, something simple. <laughs> yeah, something simple. Ten seconds, maybe sixty seconds. You know, just as long as it's not really bad audio. You know, it, so that's really what we're going for. Um, something that we're also going to be participating in a little bit more. Uh, we've already mentioned that I think like three times is International Pagan Coming Out Day. Um, it's going to be taking place on May 2nd. That's going to be in cooperation with Kara Schultz. She's one of the executive committee members uh, with International Pagan Coming Out Day. You can find them at pagancomingoutday.com. And um, if you have something you'd like to share or you want more information or you want to contribute to that, Go straight to their site. And know. they also gave us some uh, nice boilerplate material about like how you can cover this with your own pagan podcast. And they have some really good suggestions. And we've uh, that was sent to us in an email. We've since posted it to paganpodcasting.org as well. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, is going to be discussed with Kara, Dave, what, which I had to actually talk with you about also, is um, asking some of our members if they want to do a video. Um, just a small promo video, much how Star did for I'm a Witch. Yeah. Just and get, up the, get up the webcam, go on YouTube.com. They have a record from webcam feature and press a button and there you go. And we have one of our, our vidcasters here in the recording. So if she would like to do that, oh, crap. that would be nice. This. She's right there. Oh, okay. I thought I hung up on her. <laughs> Okay, uh, speaking of other, the last thing is, for those of you who went to PantheaCon, good job. I hope you had a wonderful time, and I hope to see you at 
PSG, Pagan Spirit Gathering. It's in Illinois at Stonehouse, Stonehouse Park. Mm-hmm. Wait. Stonehouse yeah, Stonehouse Park in Earlville, Stonehouse Park. Illinois. A little outside Chicago. It's about an hour outside of Chicago. So Chicago's really central airport. And they are know. doing a bus. Uh, so if you got to fly in, they, the PSG does uh, have, like, they do, they do coordinate bus service to and from the airport to the event. Yeah. Uh, and also Star Foster of Pathos.com. She's coordinating the P- Pagan Media Camp at PSG, which we're all going to be in. So, you know, you're Pagan not going to go there alone. Pagan Media will be awesome. <laughs> yes, it will. A whole bunch of wires. There's going to be no tents. It's just be tarps and wires. A whole bunch of Pagan Media from print and podcasting and video, and everybody will be there. Mm-hmm. And how many do we have so far? It's 11? Oh, it's a Ten? lot of podcasts. Oh, wow. Let me pull it up. Let me pull up the big map because it doesn't fit on a small yeah. map because it's that many podcasters. Yeah. And I don't think I've even added myself on that map uh, yet. Either. Let's see. We got Pagan Centered Podcast, Lamika's Wiccan Podcast, Pagans Tonight, The Firefly Chronicles, Pagan People, Pagan Road Trip, Pagan Men. I'm sure that list is going to get much longer before the event. And a little bit of Pagan Women because Star. Yes. And, and technically Pagan People because yeah. Star. Because it's Star. Yeah. <laughs> Star is an uh, honorary member of the PVP, apparently. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I will say last year, um, there was a huge underestimate of how many podcasters were going to be there. Uh, last year, about three podcasters said they were going to show up, and we got ten show up. So, uh, if this is any indicator, well, there's going to be a lot of podcasters at this PSG. So, this is going to be the podcasting event of the year. Also, there are pagan podcasts in that area that are not members of PPP. I've had a hard time trying to get in contact with them, like Pagan Hooligans, which is strange because Pagan Hooligans are friends with Firelight, which does Inciting a Riot, which is a member. So either way, you know, there are going to be podcasters there that are not PPP, who are probably going to end up being PPP at the end. Um, This is very, very, very important if you are attending PSG. As a member of the PPP, please remember our bylaws. Specifically, the don't make us look bad clause. Okay? Abide by the rules, abide by the recording rules and etiquette of PSG, or so help me, you will be removed from our organization. Period. Okay? Circle Sanctuary is being very gracious and allowing Kagan Media to attend in any kind of official capacity. Do not jeopardize our invitation, nor disgrace the integrity of our organization. Okay? Yeah, and uh, one thing that I, I do want to bring up is that PSG does have some atypical uh, rules regarding recording. They are very what they are very easy to work with, but this is not like going to your local pig and pride day and setting up a video camera and so forth. There's a lot of people that are in the closet, so there are rules uh, that govern the media to accommodate those individuals. So please hook up with Pagan Media Camp before you show up. This way, you don't a get kicked out of PSG and b get kicked out of PPP. And C, get us kicked out because you do something stupid. Um, Oh, the other thing I almost forgot is that if you are attending PSG and you're going to be interviewing people, you need to get the form. Yes, we will be bringing uh, printed forms. uh, But, yes, we do have a copy of the PDF. Just ask for it. Drop me an email at davidpaganpodcasting, and I'll I'll gladly send you a copy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll probably print some before we drive down. We will have plenty on hand because... Wow, did we go through them like water last year? I brought like enough for like you know about fifty people to sign them. Yeah, we went through that in like two days. <laughs> I mean, you do have to figure it's a thousand plus people, yeah. you know. So it it it's definitely worth worth it to coordinate. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have any listeners starting their own podcast, remember to have them join the PPP so that they can get the same benefits that you receive, um, as well as so that we can make sure that you know. The organization grows and nobody's forgotten, you know. Yeah, and, and don't forget, this is a fraternity organization too. So we are here to help you out. We are all, a lot of us are all uh, people that have uh, worked a very long time to learn a lot of audio and video tricks. So uh, feel welcome to ask questions. We will gladly answer them. And if you have any expertise, uh, just post it to the website. Just post an article. Uh, if you don't have access to the website to post an article, Drop me an email. I'll give you access. Again, we're all very, very welcoming of members having full access to stuff. We just ask that you be an adult. Yeah. Um, I think there was one thing I was going to mention about uh, listeners. 
or res oh, I'm sorry. Yes, on the website itself, we actually have an entire tab dedicated to resources. So under that, you can find our bylaws, um, you know, the beginnings of podcasting. So yes, we're going to ask your questions, but don't forget to check that out first so that you're not, you know, wasting your time or ours, you know, asking questions that have already been answered. Yeah, but, um, uh, yeah. and if you need clarification, just post a comment. I think most pages yeah. on the site have comments enabled, so. And you can find most of us on Facebook. Yeah, like so, uh, the Proud Pagan Podcasters Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Which, if you go to PaganPodcasting.org, click on the Facebook logo, it now takes you to the PPP group. Instead yep. of a defunct group that just happened to align itself with the PPP. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, and another way you can follow is with the Twitter. The Twitter feed, um, which... <laughs> Is also connected, so it's it's much easier access. Um, Dave mentioned already about how you know if you write an article, it's right there on the website. If you don't have access, just ask for it, and then you'll get your own, um, I guess, username and access to the website. Most of our members, we, members, we encourage you to do that, anyways, um, so that you can, as we the the whole goal of this is to increase participation, so go there and make a username. And there's For some research? really interesting articles there, and some of them, a lot of them are about podcasting, some of them are just issues that cover podcasting. So, you know, a few things that we have, like, uh, like I, I just want to feature that there's an article on uh, PaganPodcasting.org about Creative Commons licensing. We get a lot of questions about Creative Commons licensing. I'm a personal advocate of Creative Commons licensing because it allows us as podcasters to get lots of music without having to, uh, you know, like we were talking about, oh my god, you got to get written permission, you got to get written permission. But the great thing is if, if a piece of music is under a Creative Commons license and it just asks that you release your show under Creative Commons, well, if you're releasing a Creative Commons, that's explicit written permission right there. Not a whole lot of work you need to do. Um, but, I, I, you know, one thing I really like about Creative Commons licensing is because of, it's common sense uh, as far as podcasters go. It just means that, hey, you can take my show make copies of it for your friends, distribute it, you don't care, it's perfectly permitted. And you can, you can control that, and there's different aspects of Creative Commons, uh, you know, if you don't want to allow commercial uses and stuff like that. You can learn all about that in the Creative Commons licensing article. And we also have a lot of resources on the Pagan uh, Podcasting.org site. One thing I do want to bring up is the Pagan Podcast Index, which is still maintained by Heathen's Dog. Heathen's Dog is in a quest to maintain a, a sane life of his own, so uh, while he has toned down his efforts so that, you know, basically everyone has to contribute their own show notes now, he still does, uh, he still will take your notes and post it to the PPP website. He can also give you access directly so that you can post your notes directly to the, the, the Proud Pagan Podcaster site, the section for the Pagan Podcast Index. And for those of you who don't know what the Pagan Podcast Index is, it's essentially an index of every topic discussed on a lot of pagan podcasts. Not all of them, but it, it's its ultimate goal is to be an index of every topic discussed on every pagan podcast ever, which is quite uh, an uh, interesting goal. I like that. Uh, but if you just want access to upload your own show notes so you don't have to, to, to nag Heaton's Dog to do that for you, or if you want to uh, you know, help Heaton's Dog and just like, here are my show notes. Uh, what do I need to do so I can just give them to you? Yeah, you can you can always contact us, or you, you we we'll get in touch with him for you, or you can contact him directly if you have his email. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really cool resource, and I just want to remind everyone that Heathen's Dog is very much uh, an appreciated presence here at the Proud Pagan Podcasters. Definitely very appreciated, especially with what he's trying to trying to accomplish. It's it's a daunting task considering how many people have. 100 plus episodes in their shows now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Pagan Center podcast joined that effort, effort at episode 109. <laughs> that was a lot of work to get all our shows indexed, but so we, we greatly appreciate it. <laughs> uh, there was something I was going to mention earlier. For new members, you don't have to talk about spirituality to be a part of the PPP. You just have to be you can pagan. Be pagan, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, I that's, mean, that's definitely. Uh, I remember Firelight. He actually mentioned that on uh, one of his. It's actually his today's episode just came out, and um, he was talking about like, oh, this is the new trend in paganism. Pagans that you know talk about homesteading and you know, you know, GLBT issues. They just happen to be pagan, but they're talking about other things, and that's totally cool. We have no problems with that. Mm -hmm. 
um, sometimes it's nice to have a show talk about a topic and know for a fact it's not going to veer into, you know, some other faith's spiel. You know, I remember when uh, Circle of Souls radio, I used to love listening to it because I never had to worry that, you know, I'd have to hear something about somebody else's religion come up in a song. You know, it was a, it made life a little bit more relaxing. So even if you're talking about, you know, jewelry or how you make jewelry or, you know, how you love technology and all this other stuff, it, just as long as you're a pagan, okay? And it's not uh, we're talking about spirituality either. <laughs> yeah. Another interesting thing, though, is we have it in our bylaws that if you know of podcasts of other faiths that are friendly to us, they're you can list them as, you know, affiliates. Um, yeah, this is a very unknown part of the PPP bylaws. We are not restricted to just pagans. Um, this is... Be I think this has come to light in recent months because the rest of the religious community has started using the Proud Pagan Podcasters as their resource. So we got Mormons coming to us now. We got you know evangelicals coming to us for resources, and it's kind of cool that you know we are the dominant religious podcasting resource out there in the world, and all these other religious paths are coming our way asking for advice, and we're totally cool with them. You know, mm -hmm. you know, getting that kind of advice. They do their thing, we do our thing, and. They say thanks and we appreciate it. Yeah. So if also if you happen to know a specific show that is, is friendly toward us, then give us a shout out. Tell us, you know, who can we put on, on our affiliates list, okay? Mm -hmm. um, the last thing here is that we encourage all of our members to share what they've learned, to um, ask questions publicly, ask us directly. Like I said, most of us are on Facebook. All of, all of us have direct emails. We usually respond within a timely fashion, you know, not once a month type things. Um, submit blog entries yourself. Write articles up on the site. Um, you know, anything that can be helpful to the Pagan Podcasting community as well as the Pagan community. Um, we are not ridiculously strict. Um, so it's... It shouldn't be a, too much of a problem. We just ask that you be an adult and um, everything should be okay. Yeah, we've never had a problem in the... the we'll make, how long has this organization been going? Five years now at least? Uh, I started it in October of 05. Okay, so October of 05. So we're going to yeah, make six, six years. years this year. Yeah, six years. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, have yeah because I, st I joined up about a month after you started. So yeah. So yeah, six really? years. We haven't had that. We haven't had a problem with that. So let's let's keep up the good streak. Yeah, and that's what we want to do. Um, that's about it. Yeah, join us for our next recording at PSG. We got quite a lot of uh, vidcasters and podcasters in the audience. I'm sure they got questions. So we're going to take their questions. But if you're not uh, of the privileged people that knew that this show was happening. You can drop a comment on a blog, or you can email us directly. My email is davidpaganpodcasting.org, and Lamika, you can give your email address. Um, Lamika at paganpodcasting.org, or you can email me directly, lamika at gmail.com. That's a lot faster, because I check that much more often. Um, L-A-M-Y-K-A at gmail.com. Yeah, and I okay. make sure that Lamika at paganpodcasting.org goes to her gmail address, too. So. Thanks. <laughs> So okay. we try to get those things expedited. But I know we have quite a lot of questions, answers, comments, feedback. And now this is going to start sounding more like a regular podcast. <laughs> All right. So, so well, let's have everybody else introduce themselves. Uh, we're not going to go in any particular order. So whoever wants to go first. This is Amber of the Pagan Center Podcast and Red Tail Arts. And... This is Scurvy at a Pagan Centered Podcast, and he's had to wait till I got some food. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have one of our vidcasters here. Hi, I'm Lindsay from, uh, I guess my life is a teenage pagan on YouTube. Okay, we had, I think Chris went away, but he's back now. Hey, hi, this is Chris Orpillo from The Infinite and the Beyond. 
glad to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Okay. Did you guys have any questions or comments or other random questions and comments not related to what the things we went over? Uh, I I obviously do. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that pop up in the chat a little earlier on. Sorry, yeah, I no, had the, I, the duck in front of the thing so I couldn't see it. <laughs> Uh, obviously, I'm the big uh, criminal as in regards to music <laughs> that I'm not getting permission to use. Um, I have tried to contact certain people, and I never hear from them. Um, I've even tried, and maybe it's a loophole, saying that if I don't hear from you, I'm going to take this as permission to use your music. Um, I, I tried that just to maybe get a response, but that didn't even happen. So I kind of feel... A little bit in the corner because I like to pick certain songs for my episodes, uh, and I understand your uh, the Proud Pig and Podcasters issue with music. It's completely understandable. Well, the, the thing uh, so. is, a lot of musicians nowadays have embraced a Creative Commons. There are literally yeah. music millions of songs out there you can choose from. I know it's probably if you're <laughs> go ahead. I, I just want to to clarify something though. If you're trying to con are you trying to contact pagan musicians or just musicians in general? Uh, musicians in general. Uh, for example, okay. um, like The Sword, I emailed them. I didn't hear from them. Uh, I contacted Blackmore's Night. I got one email back, and they asked me a couple of questions. I answered them, and then I never heard back from them. Um, and then I just got tired of emailing, like, uh, or older bands, um, like, uh, the, oh, Blue Oyster Cult, you know, mm -hmm. older bands that may not be Creative Commons. And that's pretty much a you know, I shouldn't be using their music, you know, but uh, I want to. And I figured for me, and I understand PPP, you know, I'm not arguing that. Um, for me, I figured, hey, I've talked to people who are in radio. If I don't get a cease and desist order, I'm going to keep on doing it. And then once I get that order, then I'll stop doing it. Um, every time I put out an episode, it is a concern that, hey, I wonder if I'm going to get in trouble this time. Um, that's not the way to do a show, but that's the way I've been conducting myself. Yeah, and the thing is, a lot of artists, and especially um, the more popular ones, they, they usually wind up in contracts. So even if you contact them, they are obliged to not really give you an answer because their stuff is handled through RAAA licensing. So they can't thwart that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, that's, a, that's interesting. Thank you. Um, yeah, but th then it also presents a... This a is the reason Creative us. Commons exists because everybody just got frustrated. Yeah, you know, the artists got frustrated because they couldn't give permission. You know, podcasters were getting frustrated because, well, dealing with RAAA standards is complete headache, nightmare, grovel, 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 expensive. So then came Creative Commons, which is good for the artists, it's good for podcasters. Podcasts got released under Creative Commons, and everybody's happy with Creative Commons, but. And the Creative Commons has evolved a lot since it first came out, and especially since I've been first aware of it, you know. When I was first aware of it, it was like really bad music and video game music remixes were Creative Commons. And now it's like, there's a lot of high quality stuff that's Creative Commons now. It's kind of surprising. So, but the thing is, is also trying to find sites that carry good Creative Commons music is a pain. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people recommend uh, a lot of the, anything that has the word pod safe in it, because usually that's Creative Commons. Yeah. Uh, I am personally a fan of Newgrounds.com. They started out as a video game remix site, but they've gotten to acquire some really high, nice bands even, you know, that to release their stuff under Creative Commons. So that that is really cool. I would say, Chris, um, we're trying to be a lot more transparent and stringent on this issue, and I understand your situation, and I I empathize with it. With it, I I really do, but I'm hoping that. You know, after the release of the newsletter in March, um, as well as this episode, that you'll migrate away from doing that and try to find music from, you know, either Creative Commons release or get the permission. Because we, we can't be doing it. Well, our irony of, of doing it this way is that it perpetuates that system, whereas switching to Creative Commons perpetuates that system. 
And if it was pagan artists that you're having a problem with, Murphy, very few of them are hooked up with the RAA. And chances are, friend of a friend actually knows that particular artist. So if yeah. you ever have any problems with the pagan artists, we could probably put you in touch with them. Yeah, so <laughs> it's it's not like we're saying, you know, well, it's, it's your problem, if you and if you don't stop doing it, you're going to get automatically kicked out. No, I, I, Chris, I would say that make a list of all the people that you have tried to contact, and then actually talk with D of Pagan FM, because she does have her own radio station. You know, she deals with all of that sort of thing, regard, you know, already. So she might, um, she was supposed to be here tonight, but she, she ended up having, she was really tired. Um, but she might be able to help you with that. So we're going to find, we're going to find you ways of being able to get the proper permission for that. Because, you know, what helps you helps us. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would like to say yeah. that there are exemptions to this. And keep, there's quite a few things to keep in mind here. First of all, every country has different laws. What's legal in Canada is not legal in the U.S. And what is illegal in the U.S. may be perfectly legal in Canada. It's very true. Uh, that is very much a situation because we have a lot of Canadian podcasters. We don't want people snitching on us. Be aware that different countries have different laws. I know that is painfully obvious when it is said, but until it is said, it is something everybody forgets. Um, another thing, let's see. I was going with a lot of places with it. Oh, there's a lot of um, legal stuff that, like, like let's say, you know, I know Chris does a lot of, sometimes does skits in his shows. Well, some, there's loopholes in U.S. copyright law that say, well, if you're using it for comedic purpose, you can arguably legally use it without permission. Um, and that's, that's a loophole that, that the Pagan Center podcast used for a while until we went on the Pagan Radio Network, and their standards were even more stringent. Mm -hmm. So we stopped doing that once we were on PRN, and we have no problems with that. We just understand that doing that creates a huge mountain of paperwork for them, and we don't want to be a headache to them. Um, and it, it, I mean, and things are always changing. Like, for example, the whole situation that Chris is going into is a situation a lot of people encounter. And that's where we get the, uh, what do they call it? The Orphan Works Act that they were trying to push through. And a lot of pagans are in the uproar about it. But that's essentially the cause of it is that artists have essentially abandoned their work and they refuse to even so much as give a yay or nay about their works as far as who can do permission. So... Or even worse, you can't even find out who you're supposed to get permission from. So you might think, well, this band wrote, you know, did this song. Obviously, they have the rights to this music. They can give me the right to do it. No, they probably sold off the rights to that 20 years ago to some company. And that company sold it to another company. And that those rights have traveled around the world three times, and nobody even knows who owns them anymore. And that's where this Offering, offering Works Act comes from. So that's another thing to keep, in, to keep in mind. I'm not sure if that's still going through Congress or not. But that's also something to keep in mind. So... Oh, that's interesting. Th thanks, Dave. Now, um, a lot of the times when I do use music, I'm obviously not supposed to be using. Um, I'm talking over it. Yeah. Is is does that kind of nullify the fact that I'm using it, or no? As far as I know, no. But I, I just, I'm not a I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a person who's very familiar with copyright stuff. <laughs> well, from what I understand from what Dee was saying, um, you, I can't really confirm this right now because I my memory is uh, not that great, um, but. D was saying that if you she herself talks over certain bits of songs so as to uh, make the artists feel a little bit better that you know she's not just providing an easy access to their music for people to chop up and and take um, like I said Chris get in contact with D because she might be the best person to help you and then also keep in mind, you know, that, that there is, like, you know, when you're with a radio station, if you're associated with a radio station, you don't really have to worry about this because usually they cover your butt anyway. Um, because they have all the licensing and you fall under that licensing. And all, all is good in the world. It's just when we you got these, you know, people like us that are independent podcasters, that's when yeah. we start having to deal with all this stuff ourselves instead of being under the umbrella of a radio station that handles all this for us. Mm -hmm. Mm, well, okay. that's the hope with uh, being a part of the PPP is that we're going to be able to tell you, okay, which artists are okay, which artists will give you free stuff. Um, you know, that, that was another great thing is when we first started out, um, we used to get free music from artists. Um, entire CDs. They wouldn't just give us permission. They'd give us CDs. So we're, we're hoping to expand and, and, and once... We're a little bit more set. 
artists will approach us. You know what I mean? We're trying to build so. a rapport with artists. And yeah. And our honest main one. thing is we want to respect their concerns. And at the time, we, we also have to balance their concerns against the concerns of paying podcasters. And and that's that's it. interesting to try to handle. But I will say, Chris, you have an awesome show. I'm going to be very, very hesitant to kick you out. <laughs> but these yeah. are issues we all need to eventually deal with. And I think yeah. we've been putting this off for years and years and years. And we got to start doing something about it. We will probably make a few missteps here and there, but we'll fix that as we go. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dave and uh, Lamika. Okay. Is there any other questions or? I know you guys work your tails off, um, to a degree anyway, doing this. Is there anything that you guys would be willing to accept volunteers on that people could sign up for? And help you guys out in a little bit of free time that they have. Hell's yeah! Yes, <laughs> we need help. You know, getting you know, there's a lot of pagan podcasters out there that don't even know about the PVP. So we need people to, you know, just drop people friendly emails, not spam. We don't like spam, but you know, okay. drop a comment on a blog or something. Just say, hey, you know, this might be an organization you might be interested in. You know, that's how I joined the PVP. Uh, Lance over at Lance and Grawl, he emailed me and said, Hey, I listened to your show. Maybe we should join the PVP. I'm like, what's the PVP? You know, and that's how that all got started. Yeah. And, and, um, it's the same as with artists, you know. When I approach... Who was it? Recent, okay, recently, when I approached Thorn, I said, Hey, Sharon's already... I've already worked with Sharon. She's already given me permission. Would you like to give us permission? And once she hears, oh, so Sharon said, then da da, oh yeah, fine, you know. So the same basic principle when it comes to if you can find more musicians to come over, um, that also helps. And and the thing to keep in mind about the organization is you don't need our permission to help us. Just go out there <laughs> and do it, and we'll greatly appreciate your effort. Yes, <laughs> we'll put you down as contributors on the website and everything. We 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 really if you don't ask us to do something. Just do it, and we'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, so, can you give some examples of some kind of things you guys would be looking for other than just adding people in, members or music? Besides that, mm-hmm. Well, I know there's a. We even have a, an Anta Andres Coggin. He, uh, they don't even have a podcast anymore, but they're always contributing content to the website. Really mm -hmm. interesting audio advice, just just out of the box stuff you wouldn't think of, and, and the works. Yeah, some of our members, um, and Anta has been with us since the beginning, and he stopped podcasting. Gosh, like four years ago. But he's, yeah, he, well, but it was, it, you know, it was something we all knew about, you know, and, and he's been with us forever. So he kind of gets like a, a free pass because honestly, he's the one who does most of the articles on the site. Yeah. Yeah. You contribute, we'll keep you around. <laughs> yeah. You don't contribute, your show might disappear. You know, I mean, we're not going to cut people entirely, you know, because it is opt in, but. You know, if you're not contributing at all, whether it's articles, um, to help spreading the word, uh, going to an event, being part of an event, uh, mention us. And you I, know, if and the thing is too, it's, it's not just shameless self promotion here. I mean, sometimes people come up with an idea, like Star Forester came up with the idea for Pagan Media Camp, and we're like, yeah, we're on board with that. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this mm -hmm. is kind of how we work, and, and we will help you. If you got an idea that is really cool, that's going to be really cool for pagan podcasters, do it, and we'll, we'll help you out as best we can, and especially with video. A lot of us are getting into video now. Uh, I, I, I my, See, with the PPP started, it really helped make the quality of audio podcasts of, by pagans much better, mm -hmm. and I think it's time that we somehow do the same thing to pagan video because pagan video out there right now, with exception of, you know, you know, uh, Lindsay's show, uh, my my life as a teenage pagan, or um, uh, Aiden Odinson's show and his one net network. Um, with the exception of that, and, oh, and Magic TV. Let's not forget them; they're a part of the PPP. Um, with the exception of that, there's a lot of really bad pagan content out there. That's just like, okay, there's, there's some really interesting web series, but there's got to be a lot more to paganism than people shouting into their webcams. 
So hopefully um, we can do something there. And if you know something that you can do to help, just do it and we'll love you for it. Or, you know, another way you can help is if you know that there are videos out on YouTube that are pagan, tell us about them. Because, um, you know, I, I found a video randomly one night of Marion uh, Weinst Weinstein or Weinstein. I, I can never pronounce her name properly, but she passed away. She was a, a pagan artist who she had a few videos on YouTube that I guess maybe uh, other pagans who were working with her had videoed her talking about certain things. Or, um, what is it, Lori, Ka Lori Cabot, she has, she has video on YouTube. I mean, you know, it's, it seems strange, but it's a record of what all of us are doing. So if you find it, refer it to us. We'll add it to the uh, our own YouTube channel that lists all of these pagan videos. Yeah, and if you are, uh, uh, you know, if you know anything that will help benefit pagan media, pagan podcasting, pagan vidcasting, pagan YouTube channels, or, you know, just documenting paganism in, as a whole, we'd love to be part of that in some way, shape, or form. I mean, we even though we are a membership organization, we are here to perpetuate pagan media as a whole. Uh, yeah. What we do benefits everyone, regardless of they're a member or not. Though mm -hmm. members tend to get better perks. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I almost forgot. The other thing that people can do, if they are, you know, if they want to help and, and, and they want to be a volunteer, start indexing other members' shows. Because... I've never indexed any of my shows, and I probably never will myself. You just want I somebody else to index yourself. Yes, I want somebody else to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I want someone else to freaking do it because I just can't. It's weird to sit there and listen to myself and write down notes and stuff. Well, those of um, us over at the Pagan Center podcast, we index our own shows. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Fly. Um, you know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't have. It, all joking aside, it doesn't have to be my show. It doesn't have to be any of the the, the big name shows. Pick you know, pick a small show, uh, the Pagan Homesteader. The, you know, um, new shows, inciting a riot. Index their shows. You know, mm -hmm. that that helps everybody. That helps our listeners know what we're, what topics are floating around in in pagandom right now. Okay. Index. You mean show notes? Yes. Yeah. For the the pagan podcasting index to index different shows and their episodes. Sure, I get motivated. Woohoo! <laughs> that is a, okay, a hardcore volunteer. We would agree. Well, I think another thing too is uh, a lot of stuff that people do for audio post production. I mean, yeah, we link to websites, but we just never document it and. I, you know, sometimes, you know, especially with, like, a, a multi-person crew, like, I just need to explain. It's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to make a video of this now and post it to Pagan Podcast in an organ. Everybody else can just watch it, too. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we're going to do things. I mean, there's no reason we all need to be isolated from one another. We can just use Pagan Podcasting.org as our central brain dump. You know, for all, and, and the cool thing is, because you're doing audio stuff from Pagans all in one place, you get a lot of people that really know what they're doing all in one place. And I love that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you have people that you can ask. Um, resources up the wazoo. So, did that answer your question, Amber? Yes. Thank you. Was there anything else, Dave, that we could add to that? I mean, it is just like we. I. I. I the whole organization is think outside the box. <laughs> You know, it, it's, it's, we are a very abnormal organization in that we let pretty much anybody do what they want, and we are fully supportive of them. Mm -hmm. um, well, and it works because we put our foot down. Yeah, yeah, we do. This isn't like some other pagan organizations where, you know, we preach, you know, love and light and tolerance. I mean, yes, we are here to be, breed fellowship, and we are here to help each other out. We are here to help everybody become better, you know, by means of everyone helping everybody else, but... At the end of the day, if you start a ruckus uh, or, or start, you know, proudly proclaiming, screw the RAAA, I want to copyright everything and pirate everything, yeah, yeah, we're going to have some problems with that. Yeah. Well, not really, because we'll just get rid of you and that'll be it. Oh, that'll be our way of dealing with those problems. Yeah. <laughs> um, Real pagans pirate stuff. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> um, any other questions or comments? 
Oh, live pagan podcasting. So right. this is uh, live.paganpodcasting.org. So if you go to work and you're bored and you have access to a computer, go to live.paganpodcasting.org. If there is a live show on, whether they, whether or not they are a member of PPP, but PPP memberships do get uh, uh, priority. Uh, if there's a live show going on, it will play that live pagan show live as it's being recorded, which is really cool. And if it's there's nothing on right now, we just replay current PPP shows. So mm-hmm. it's still awesome. Yeah, so in a way, we have pretty much basically our own online radio. <laughs> um, live. <laughs> live live or, or so- you know. Mm-hmm. Live feeds are so much more fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it'll, it'll well, automatically jump you from show to show, so you can be listening to uh, the Pagan Center podcast when we record on Wednesdays, and then you'll automatically be brought to Pagans Tonight when they start recording. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think we've covered everything. Lindsay, did you have any questions? Um, no, not really. I was kind of thinking uh, with the whole promo thing y'all were talking about earlier. Since I don't do any editing and I have no idea where to audio, like to post audio for that, what exactly would I do? You could just make a quick YouTube video. I wasn't sure if it had to be audio or if it could be a YouTube video. Yeah, what, what do we do for video people when we make them? Because we, um, we keep forgetting would, we do video now too. <laughs> yeah, I, I would definitely say that if you're doing uh, YouTube video, yeah. Okay. There we go. What what Chris had had written here, you know, make it into audio from video. You can you can do it any way which you want. I mean, if you do uh, a nice video promo that's short, you can share that, as well as just doing what mo- most podcasters do and just recording a short, they really just, short. They, yeah, promo. They, they get out the laptop, they, they scream into it, and <laughs> they they have like Microsoft Sound Recorder up or whatever the equivalent is on or Mac. Audacity or Audacity, which works everywhere and it's free. It's really easy to use. You, it's got a big red record button and a big square stop button, and you just file, make into something else, you know, MP3 or whatever. And you just do that. I mean, that's, that's really how simple making an audio promo is. Um, so, yeah, that eluded me completely, which is why I went to YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah, YouTube videos is, is just much easier. It's just uh, click here to access webcam. Now record. Yay! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and that's, um, but, you know, it's gotten a lot easier, though. Like, you know, when podcasting first started, it was just a complete Donkulously mess. difficult. <laughs> yeah, I was going to use a worse word than that, but yes. Um, it was pretty bad. But now you, you've got so many free um, audio recording programs like Audacity that everybody can use, P- PC, Mac, whatever. And um, it's really simple. You can, if you wanted to beef up um, an audio drop-in, you know, you could, or just made it sim- make it simple, you could. I mean, it's it's all in your hands, what you want to do. And if you need resources on how to go about it, we have that on paganpodcasting.org under resources. But the cool thing is, is that if you make a promo, like say, you know, like PCP, we just had a show a, a few months ago where we are trying to piece together promos from a whole bunch of different shows. Well, then I could just go to your YouTube channel, get your promo, and I could worry about converting it to audio because downloading it from YouTube and then converting it to audio is really not that difficult of a process for you know experienced people who are looking to do this kind of thing. The main thing is just having that stuff accessible in the first place. Format Factory. Yep. Format uh, OZ.com. Yeah, it's, it's a weird URL. <laughs> and uh, YouTube Downloader. You're good to go there. Oh, by the way, one phenomenal thing about using audio to po- our audacity to post produce your podcast which probably everybody here already knows but uh you can really do a lot for the stupid that falls out of your mouth sometimes if you're prone to fits of add rambling audacity is a good thing yeah, not, if, not, not that we know anybody here right now that's prone to add fits of rambling scary <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, we could probably um, wrap this up for now. Yeah, We've well, hit about an hour mark. Yeah, yeah, we'll see everybody at PSG. Okay, so see you for the summer uh, PPP recording at Pagan Spirit Gathering. Yep, we'll be Ten back plus in, shows are going. Yeah, we'll be back uh, in the quarter of a year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.